Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how to make an in-game cutscene today and this can be used in Unity Pro, Unity Free, whatever you want to use because the problem is with Unity Free you can't use movie textures so you can't play a video if you wanted to make it as your little cutscene so you've got to incorporate things that make it real time and in-game so I'm going to show you a really basic way that's going to let you have a new camera do something with this camera, disable all your first person controller elements and actually do something then when the camera looks at an object and then switch control back to your player so then you can actually play the game again. So in my scene all I've got is my, f my physics objects so I've got 10 box boxes each with a rigid body component. If you've got a component physics rigid body and that just means they'll be affected by physics and they've all got use gravity ticked. Um, I've just got a basic scene with a quick text drop on got to sort this out another time um, a first person controller with the main camera and then a second camera which is positioned in the back corner of the room and you can make one of them is if you go a game object create other and then camera and what you can do is if you've if you wanted this view you can click a line to view and you can align it to whatever view you're looking at in your actual scene view but when you play this scene um, you'll notice that you know you'll have camera 2 as the main camera and then you'll be able to play around with your character controller now in a cutscene you don't want to be able to use that first person controller you don't want to be able to see it and you want to make sure that this camera 2 is the one that's going to do something and then it'll switch control back so you can play as it so we'll start off really and I'll start off with something something basic this is going to be it's going to be um part of the cutscene. So what I'm going to create is I'm going to create a script called box physics. And what I'm going to do here is this box physics is going to actually be what I'm going to do for my cutscene. So it's going to make my boxes explode. So I'll do run through this quickly because you can find this on the Unity scripting reference about adding an explosion to rigid bodies. But for the sake of this we don't need to cover it too much. If you want me to cover it I, w I will do and we can show how to make things explode really quickly now we don't need to have this yet because that's referencing a couple of bits that I'm going to show later on so really I'll put a link in the description of how to get this script and um, all it does is has a radius and a power and you'll notice that if I get rid of this as well, this is what the script looks like. You'll notice that it just takes all the colliders in a certain range and certain radius and adds an explosive power to them. And that's all it does. And then it just makes them all blow up. So I'll save this. And it's my box physics script. And that's basically what we want for now. So that's going to make my boxes blow up. Watch, I, what, I'll, I'll actually show you what happens. So if I click on cube 1, add box physics. What I'll do is set the radius to something like 100 and set that to 10,000, you know, something ridiculous. When I apply this to my box, it won't do anything because I'd set myself its own its own function. So what we're going to do here is I've just set it to a, f a function start, so as soon as the script loads it'll, it'll work. We'll play the scene and you'll notice that they blow up as soon as the actual <laughs> scene starts. So there's just the basic script for that. Right, so we're going to create another script, and this is going to control what our main cameras do, how we disable some scripts, and the basic stuff we're going to create for a cutscene. So we're going to call this camera switch. And keep these named as I've named them, just so you can follow along, because you were going to need to reference them in the script. So, if you notice now, what we've got, we'll delete these two out. We'll say, we'll need to set two variables, so we'll say camera one and we'll set that as type camera and then we'll create another variable called camera two and set that as type camera and then what I'm going to do is create a private variable called box physics oh. I can spell physics right and then set that to type box physics but to make this differentiate from the actual um, variable name, 
we'll just have that as a lowercase. And then what we're going to write is we're going to write function start. And then we're going to add two curly brackets. And what we're going to say is that game object with two capitals dot find. And then we're going to find the first person controller as its spell in Unity. So if we go back into Unity and you see the first person controller, you'll see it there with the spaces in. And then we'll say dot get component in brackets FPS input controller dot enabled equals false. So if you save that, what that means is at the start, it'll find the game object called first person controller and it'll find something called input FPS input controller and that's what lets you use your um, keys to actually control. So if that's as false, you won't be able to control it and you won't be able to do anything. Then what we want to do is copy this same line. We'll paste it in. And then what we want to do is find the game object called graphics and in unity the graphics is this and it's the capsule collider or whatever you're using as your, your mesh and we don't want that to show so we're going to get rid of the mesh renderer so we're going to say get component mesh renderer down there dot enabled equals false and then we're going to actually reference our two cameras so camera one dot camera dot enabled equals false so whatever we set as the main camera or whatever we set to camera one will actually be disabled and we'll put camera two dot camera dot enabled equals true so whatever we put in that variable slot that will be enabled and for now that'll be okay because what we'll do is we'll go on the main camera and we'll put camera switch on there we see we've got two spaces if we put main camera on camera one and that on camera two you'll notice that when I play my game yep my boxes explode we're on camera two as we were before but you'll notice that we don't have that FPS controller in the scene anymore so you'll notice that if I go on the first person controller the FPS input has been rid of the graphics the mesh render is gone and then it'll have changed our controller as well so if we go off play so that's that's nice as it is now but what we want to do is actually do something with the camera too so it actually works as our cutscene so we'll go window we'll go animation and we'll say that we're recording new animation by clicking that and then we'll click we'll name this as camera zoom 2 and what I'll do is click on transform, so it selects all of them, add a keyframe at the top, go across to about a second. And what I'll do is then grab my camera, make it go towards my boxes. So I can see it in the little view, and then if we scrub back, you'll notice it flies towards my boxes and that's okay for now so that animation is now on camera 2 we want to untick play automatically because we don't want it to play automatically we'll go back into our camera script, um, switch script and then we'll say camera 2 dot animation dot play and then we'll put close the brackets and put a semicolon and then what we're doing is making that actual animation play when we start. So if we do that, you'll notice that my camera zooms in and then it explodes. But we're gonna we're gonna sort this out. So what we're gonna need to do is actually reference the uh, the function here. So I'll change this function back to explode. So we're gonna want to make this activate only when we actually have zoomed in on waited a period of time so as I added a private variable up here for box physics we're gonna say at the bottom we're gonna say box physics equals game object 
dot find and we added it to cube one and then we'll say get component and then we'll open the brackets and set it to capital box physics so box physics is the variable here then the script is actual box physics so we're setting it to that we're finding this and then what we'll do is then after we've done the uh, the camera animation we'll say yield wait for seconds and then we'll put two seconds something like that so we're going to wait two seconds then we're going to call a new function called move boxes and then under here we're going to say function move boxes then we add our two curly brackets and say box physics dot explode so what we're doing is we're just calling the other function in the other script so that'll mean in our other script if we go to our other script we'll see it in here we'll see that when explode is called it'll do the explosion and what we have to actually do is give the control back to the other script when we've done so what I want to do is I'm going to create another function called go back because it has a problem when you call back to a function when you've written a yield doesn't like it so what we'll do is if we create a new function here so when we get to here it'll just run to this function and say we'll say yield wait for seconds I'll explain all this at the end so it makes sense when we wait three seconds then we'll say what we want to say so we need to add a new variable so private variable camera script and we'll set this to camera camera switch oops camera switch because like we did here as box physics set to box physics and we ask it to find the component we're doing it in this script now so we can go backwards and then we'll say when explode is called we'll say camera script equals game object like before dot find and then we'll find main camera so it's attach the main camera dot get component camera switch like here and we'll close that and we'll say we'll find that component so when we go if we go back to this function that co goes back to our camera script we'll say what we'll say is camera script dot and what we'll do is call this main camera switch because we're going to actually go to a, a function in our other script so if we go here and then what we'll do is we'll make another function where we'll call it main camera switch and we'll add the curly brackets and then what we'll do is we'll copy these two lines paste them in set this one to true and this one to false and then what we'll say is we'll add find these again and we'll say first person trailer will set that to true and then we'll set this to true and we'll save that out and if we go back into unity and I got an error so you make sure that you remember that the variable needs a semicolon at the end I sometimes forget and what will happen is we'll play the scene so it zooms in towards it waits a few seconds things fall waits a few seconds more and then we give control back to the player so you can play as you would before so that may have been quite confusing and quite daunting but I'll go through it again so really all we've got is we've got the boxes in the scene we've got one of the boxes and it's named cube one we've got box physics script attached to that we've got one main camera and we've got camera switch attached to that so if I go back into
camera switch, you'll notice that I've got two variables, camera one, camera two, set as camera. All we're doing is on the start, we're finding the components that we need. So we find on the first person controller, the FPS, uh, the FPS input control, we disable it. We find the graphics game object and we disable the mesh renderer. We've added the main camera and the camera two. We set main camera at first to false and then the second camera the true so we can play that we play its animation that we made and then we wait an amount of seconds so we wait two seconds after it's done that and then we call the function move boxes and what move boxes does is that it goes to the variable that we set which was box physics so box physics is this script and we call the function which is explode and there is explode and when we go to explode, you'll see, well, you'll see that we're actually doing the script which makes the boxes blow up. And we call the function go back and go back we made here. And we wait three seconds before the, the camera script that we set up here um, is called as camera sh um, switch. And we found that by finding the main camera component and getting that component we wanted. And we're calling the function again, which is in our other script down here. And so after waiting three seconds, it goes to this function. It gives um, the main camera true, so it enables it again. It turns our other camera off, and it actually gives us control of the player by setting it to true. And turning the graphics back on so we can actually see the player if we need to. So realistically, basically, as I said before, the camera zooms in as soon as it plays, wait two seconds, the um, cubes blow up, goes back to our other function, and now we have control back of the player. So you had a cutscene, whatever you wanted. So in actual fact, in your box physics, say that this was, say you call this explode, you could do anything here, you could do anything you wanted, you could start another animation plane, you could and create an explosion you could create a zoom in on a character's face any anything you want anything you need to do this is just a basic of the main points are actually disabling the fps input controller the graphics and choosing what camera you want to use and then doing it like that and if you need any more help on this subject please let me know and i'll try and you know make it more of an easy option but give it a go and tell me what you think so that's pretty much it. Cheers. And if you like the tutorial, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.